Hello everyone, Miss Alice here. I am in a different place today and I'm enjoying this plant because it looks like it's growing out of my head if I sit here, which is quite fun. Maybe like a, a new scrunchie or something. Anyway, I have got the start of chapter four for you. It's called Young Mr. McGregor's Very Bad Day. Uh oh. Meanwhile, in a very large, very beautiful, very crowded city, a young man is making his way along a busy pavement. It's filled with people tapping on their phones, listening to music, riding bikes and hailing double-decker buses. This is London and the man, Thomas McGregor, is walking into a very expensive department store called Harrods. A row of workers are waiting for him in the staff room. It is almost as if Mr McGregor was a general and, there were his, and these were his troops. If it were a battlefield and not a department store. Fifteen minutes until doors open, says McGregor to his team. They're lined up outside waiting to be dazzled. Let's see how prepared we are. He heads out from the staff room, his employees falling in line behind him. It is inspection time, one of the things McGregor loves best about his job. McGregor and his team arrive at the toy department. He inspects a doll's house and spots the tiniest wrinkle on a pillow. Janelle, if you were a girl who always dreamed of having her own doll's house, what would you think of this? asked McGregor, his voice stern. Uh, I would be excited, says Janelle nervously. Not with a ruffled pillow. This is a nightmare, said Mr McGregor and fluffs the tiny pillow. Toss and fluff, toss and fluff. It's not rocketry. Rocketry is next. And with that, McGregor heads to the rocketry section. He measures the rocket's angles with a compass. 82.6 degrees, the angle at which Apollo 13 was launched. I know you'll think I'm crazy, but the little girl who wants to be an astronaut is going to know. And we've just blown up her dreams. Like Apollo 1, says McGregor firmly. Next, it's the toilets. Don't be afraid to really get in there, McGregor says, kneeling over a toilet and scrubbing away. Our toilets should be as clean as a drinking fountain, he continues, and takes out a straw as if he is going to drink the water. The workers watch in horror until a head pops around the toilet door. McGregor, the general manager has asked to see you. McGregor freezes, just before his straw touches the toilet paper. This is it, my promotion. They said it could happen this week. How do I look? asked McGregor. Like a man about to drink toilet water with a straw, says one horrified worker. Perfect, says a distracted McGregor. He straightened his coat and heads off. McGregor stands looking at the lift's mirrored door, rehearsing what he will say. Thank you, ma'am. I will pin the associate general manager name tag on my jacket with honour, says McGregor, before the lift arrives and takes him to the general manager's floor. On the way up, Thomas smiles at a pretty customer that gets in the lift beside him. She smiles back as she presses the button and smudges the brass. Quickly and ever the perfectionist, Thomas rubs off the smudge with his handkerchief. The pretty lady is less than impressed. Where were we? he asks, turning to her. Nowhere, she snaps. McGregor enters the general manager's office. He takes a seat at the desk opposite the general manager herself. I have some bad news, Thomas. Yes, your great uncle. Lost my place. Oh, sorry. No, no, don't say it, says Thomas. Yes, your great uncle has passed away. What? says McGregor, confused, his mind filled only with thoughts about the promotion. I'm very sorry, the general manager continues and stands to put a hand on his shoulder. What about the promotion? says McGregor. It's the only thing he cares about right now. Excuse me, said the general manager, in shock. Surely Thomas McGregor should be more concerned with the death of a family member. Associate general manager, what I've been working towards for the past ten years, says McGregor, trying to keep the conversation on track. You're in shock, I understand, in times of grief. No grief? Did I get it or not? Barks McGregor, interrupting the general manager before she can go on him any more about grief and such nonsense. What? No, it went to Bannerman. Bannerman, says the general manager. Bannerman, the only Bannerman I know is Nigel Bannerman and he's an... That's the one. He's an... Im... <laughs> he's an imbecile. He's not even... He's not even that, McGregor. McGregor's... Can't he quite believe what is happening, but he happens to be the chairman's nephew. You think I want our best man at passed over, says the general manager. She's in a very difficult position. Oh dear, McGregor is not going to be happy about this, is he? 
I wonder what his next move will be. Okay, tomorrow, I'm trying to think who it is. I can't remember, it'll be a surprise for everybody. Okay then, well, hopefully I might see you soon. I'll miss everybody lots and enjoy the recipe to rabbit. Bye.